Hey everybody, this is Dan Collins of the CUNY Kingsborough Math and Computing Department. And in this video, uh, which I think is the last of a series on using Blackboard tests, I'm going to show you how students uh, submit their tests and also how you, the instructor, are going to grade their tests if it's anything other than just a straight multiple choice test. So at this point in the sequence, we have um, two tests that we've created by two different means. Um, one of them is all multiple choice. One of them is uh, has has one essay question in it for, for a mathematical proof. Um, and uh, we have um, deployed those tests both to our testing area. Um, so what I'd like to do to begin with is I'm going to pretend that we are a student. I'm going to go into student view mode, pretend that we're a student, and go through the process of actually taking those tests so that you can see what that looks like from the student's end. So I'll go into uh, student preview mode. Just take a second for Blackboard to switch into that. And then um, I guess I have Collaborate set up as the home page here for, for students is what I have. That could be changed. Anyway, uh, we put those tests uh, over here on the main menu in a new area called Testing. So I'll click on that if I was a student. And you can see that I currently have two tests available. Obviously, on practice, I would never do this. I would always only have one at a time. But um, I've currently got both of these available. So I'm going to start with this um, statistics test that, if I recall correctly, has um, three questions and is all multiple choice. So I'll click on that. And I get this beginning page as the student. And it gives us whatever instructions, whatever description uh, we put in previously, and uh, usually one or two specific things here. So it's reporting on the force completion status. Remember when we deployed that test, there was a check check bar uh, check box for yes or no. Do you want a force completion? And we were recommending uh, probably leave that to no, so that if there's a uh, internet connection problem, they can get back into it. And that's what this is telling a student is this test can be saved and resumed later. You could um, save the test, close the browser, open it back up as long as the test is at least available is what they're saying. And that's probably how we're going to have it. So um, that is that information. All right, so I think I understand the instructions here. And I'm going to begin as a student. Now remember, we have uh, this test set up to only show one question at a time. And I also clicked myself the default, I guess, no. Um, don't make a brand new browser window for this. Just show it to me in the, the one single browser window um, is how I personally set up my tests. Uh, again, if I'd filled in description instructions in that example, that would show up here. It's also telling us uh, about what our, ch our choice from the instructor's standpoint about whether we're allowing multiple attempts or not. So those are the two, I guess, those are the two things that Blackboard likes to be really, really clear about to the student is the multiple attempts choice and the force completion choice. And of course, we've got that set to no multiple attempts allowed, not allowed. This test can only be taken once, so make it count. Um, and they do report uh, the status of that to the student all the time. So uh, here's question one. And of course, this is a, a statistics test on um, uh, measures of center. So you can see I'm getting one question here. Um, I'm going to fill in my answer over here. So find the mode with the given sample data. So I can see there's two uh, 33s here, and I would have to absolutely not know anything about modes whatsoever to not realize, wait a minute, there's two 94s there too. Right, okay, right, okay. So in that case, the mode is both 94 and 33. Right, almost tricked me. <laughs> Good start, Dan. Good start. So you can see that um, there's a button here that anytime the student wants to save the answer, they can click that. But actually, it just automatically saves it anyway, about like two seconds after they, they pick an option or something like that. Now that we've got that, you're going to pick to get to the next answer, uh, the next question, you're going to click this single arrow to go to question two. Now you notice, I'll just point out, this is the one place where the first time students take a Blackboard test, they commonly make a mistake because right right next to that single arrow, there's a double arrow that will just jump you immediately to the last question. And so a common problem is that students can't see the difference of that. It's very, very faint and very, very subtle. And what some students always do is they, like in, a, in an M1 final, is they click last question, jump to the last question, then there's this big bright button that says submit. They hit that and they just submitted the test and they only ever saw question one. Super common problem. So that's part of the, one of the many, many reasons why we're recommending be a little bit generous 
um, the first time students see this stuff because I always see that in the M1 finals and then we have to get uh, the proctor or the IT person to go clear the test out and get the student back in and oh my goodness it's such a hassle. Anyway, so let's say we're doing the right thing and I click the single arrow and now I'm on question two. Find the mean for the given sample data. Uh, one decimal place. So I would need a calculator for this. I'm just going to kind of ballpark that uh, from 10 to 19. So probably around 15 or so, something like that. Not sure. Uh, so I'll hit the single arrow for that. Here's question three. Remember that one of the options was to show all the questions at once. Uh, we're seeing the questions one at a time here. Uh, find the median for the given sample data. And da 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 da. Geez, those are already in order. That's interesting. Okay, so uh, if I know anything about the, me the median at all, it's once you've got it ordered, it's the one in the middle. So pretty sure this would be 57 miles there. Um, I guess hypothetically it would have been in interesting to make the, the values scrambled up there. Uh, we did get this question originally from a Pearson test gen test bank. Um, and I think I just picked the first one in the list. So it was clearly the easiest one. And if I wanted it any harder, I would have looked, I would have hunted for one with the numbers in a different order. Anyway, so uh, this is the last question here. And again, when once you've gotten to the last question, which people can jump to at any particular time if they hit a particular button, uh, now you've got this black save and submit that's only available when they're sitting on the last question. One, just before I click that, one other thing. There is this bar up here that says question completion status. And so if a student clicks on that, right, um, it's going to indicate questions that, one, two, three in this case, that have or have not been completed. Like if it's not completed, it's highlighted maybe in like an outline or something like that. And if they click any one of these things, they can just jump back to one of those questions to either double check or pick up one that they didn't bother answering before. Um, and people commonly do that. If in our uh, test deployment options, we had clicked uh, no backtracking, this would not be available to them. But I kind of like that. Again, uh, models an in-class uh, test, uh, gives them the possibility of double checking or editing things like that. So I think that's a good idea. Um, uh, great, so I think I'm done with that test as this uh, hypothetical student and I will click save and submit. I'm uh, gonna confirm that. It's pretty important that they're doing the right thing. Nonetheless, again, I'll say in those M1 finals, students go through this whole thing. They just plow through this process and accidentally submit it after answering only one or two questions. Um, but in this case, I think I know I'm doing the right thing. Yes, submit that test. Now, what they see here, right, is they have confirmation that the test has been saved and submitted, uh, indicates what, who the student is, uh, the, the start and ending time, how much time they used, and then it says click OK to re review results is what it is. And then, of course, I mean, they could hypothetically just exit and be done at this point, but if they click OK, here's what they see. Um, they definitely see the, the score, right? This has already been graded by Blackboard uh, because it's a multiple choice test, and it's immediately reporting that they got two out of three points correct, and that is not something, I obviously I got the mean question wrong, um, and uh, that is not something you can change. Um, down below here, in this particular example, you're seeing the Blackboard default for additional information. And remember that the default was as soon as the student submits it, they're going to see at least the points for each question. So they do see what questions they were just looking at. And over here on the right, they're saying, first question, I got one point for that. The question on the mean, I got zero points. And the third question, I got one point. So that's the Blackboard default. But remember, if you want to be more generous, um, you could have shown all the multiple choice options and which one they submitted and which one is correct. If you wanted to be more strict, you could have just wiped out the whole test, in, the, the whole test feedback section, and then they would not see this stuff down here. They would not see the questions. They would not see the points. But again, the, the total score on the test here, that attempt score, that's locked down there. You cannot modify that. Students can always see what their score was, what their overall score was when they get done with the test. Unless we go to CUNY Central and we get some kind of programmer to change the system here, but that's how that works. Okay, so the student is done with that statistics test. 
And now let's say they're going to go take this mini exit exam that actually does have one open response proof question on it. So I did ha kind of have a plan all along here is I wanted to show one multiple choice test and one non multiple choice test. So here's the mini exit exam. Again, uh, you see the instructions, so you can reflect on that, uh, assuming you're okay with that. Reporting on force completion, and once we get in, it'll re report on the multiple attempt status. So I'll start this. Um, so here's the, the first uh, algebra question here. Again, description and instructions that we filled in at the top. Multiple attempts, force completion is always there. If that's interesting. The question completion status is open because I clicked on that before. Hmm. Anyway, so for most students, that won't be visible to begin with. They do have to click on that. And in M1 final, I usually go around and show students how to do that. So, um, in and, and just for as a little side point here, the way I had that set up on the statistics test, I did have randomized questions checked. So if you go back a couple videos, you'll see that when I put the test together, I put a question for the mean, then the median, then the mode. When I just took it, it came up in a scrambled order of mode and then mean and then median, right? And any particular student in that case would get possibly any, any random ordering of those questions. Now, this test, I didn't bother to do that because this test has this one essay question and conceptually I kind of wanted it to be the last thing. So in this case, I did not, as the instructor, click randomize questions. And now I actually will get it in the exact same order that we constructed the test just for a little variety. So here's this algebra question here, solving a quadratic equation. And if I recall correctly, um, that's going to be this first one because obviously it's the only one that has two solutions to it. And I'll click the uh, next arrow button, being really careful to avoid that double arrow that would send me to the last question and possibly accidentally submit it right then. But I'll go to question two, differentiation question. think that happens to be this first one. Um, I think these are, uh, I mean, the, the options should be um, uh, scrambled up because I selected that uh, explicitly when I made these questions. Correct, actually, right, because I remember the last two here were in a different order, uh, the C and D. So I, I often say random numbers will mess with your head, except I don't use the word mess. Um, and so I think accidentally I'm getting most of the options in the same order that I created them. So I just had to think about that a little bit. But the last, the, the C and D are clearly flip-flop from when I made it. All right, so there's that, and I'm moving on to question three here. And on this particular question, right, for variety, I didn't make this multiple choice. I made this technically in the essay category. So here, uh, the student is being confronted by this very little short um, question from our discrete math class, prove that the sum of any two odd integers is even. And you can see that they are getting a standard Blackboard text box. They can type whatever in they want in here. There's no limit to how long this goes. They have all the different formatting capacities if they want. Hypothetically, they've got the formula math editor. Okay, so hypothetically, you could have, and I'll say with a totally different system and a totally different college many years ago, I did try to have students present symbolic answers online like this, and you could have them use the fraction builder and the square root builder and stuff like that. Or if they had been taught LaTeX, they could totally do the dollar dollar x squared type of code for LaTeX, they could do that. Again, um, what are the chances that your students are going to be able to interface with that. I don't know. You're going to have to make a decision about that. If, if, you, if you actually do use this and have students use the symbolic math editor, I would really like to find out what class that was for and how that went for you uh, because I think that's going to be uh, brand new territory for all of us and I don't think anybody's done that to date. Now, just to save time, I did write up this uh, particular answer previously so you didn't have to think about me carefully composing that. Uh, for what it's worth, right, I picked this question because I don't really need any exotic symbols here. Uh, this just uses plus, uh, plus and equal signs. So it's okay, I guess, in this case to just write this out on the keyboard normally. I don't need special symbols. So, you know, maybe think about that. If you can design it without any exotic symbols, maybe that'll be kind of a smoother interface if you do that. All right, so there's that. So pretty happy with that, and I'm done with the uh, the test at this point, and this student will click Save and Submit. And again, gonna confirm that to be careful, which I kinda like. 
Uh, again, you're gonna have this uh, confirmation here that that happened and I'll click OK and I will get to see results. Now on this test, I guess I also left this default. Since there's that open response question that the instructor has to interact with, the attempt score here says grade not available because we don't need know all about it. But since um, two of them were multiple choice, those are already automatically graded. Did I pick the wrong thing there? Really interesting. Hmm, didn't expect that. Um, I guess I wasn't paying attention. My bad. Um, and obviously this essay question here needs grading from the instructor, so there can't be any score involved there. So again, if you wanted to be more strict and not see that, you would have turned off the, um, the extra information bit. Uh, but in this particular case, the attempt score isn't available anyway. All right, so students done with that. Done with that. And now I'm going to, again, switch hats and I'm going to switch away from the pretend student view back to the instructor view and you'll get a you'll get a look at how the instructor interacts particularly with that second test with the essay question as it's categorized so I'll exit preview uh, again this is just uh, if I want the example to be visible I will keep that data probably not something you need to worry about and back as the instructor I'm going back to my home page here uh, let's see, so I know that I have uh, tests that have been submitted. So now I'm going to go down to Grade Center. I'll flip over to the Grade Center. And over here on the far right, for these two uh, tests that have been submitted, you can see that the multiple choice test in statistics has already automatically been graded. The grade just automatically appeared in the Grade Center, and that's in the can and students can log back in and they can see that if they want to. And that's already automatically uh, you know, included in our weighted total formula over here. So all that stuff gets uh, updated automatically. There's this uh, mark uh, here, the needs grading exclamation mark next to the, que the, the test that had at least one open uh, response question. So I'm gonna start interacting with that now. Presumably you're gonna have a whole bunch of students here. I just have these two sample students. And at the top of the column, with the drop down arrow, I will pick grade attempts. I think this is similar to when I did this in the assignments video, if I'm correct. So very, very analogous. All right, so here's what that looks like here. Grading, manually grading an attempt uh, on a test in Blackboard. Um, you can see uh, this test information for this particular user. I'm using it, I'm looking at the one single user that submitted it. If you click this arrow here, you would flip to the next user if you wanted to. This test information, it usually starts off uh, collapsed like this. And right before I did this video here, I expanded it. And you can see information like this needs grading, what's the current score, the time elapsed, how long the student took to take the test, which might possibly be interesting. There's a whole log available for when the student specifically logged in and tried it. And then there's this clear attempt button, which is kind of important. If a student has a problem, gets in touch with you, you are convinced about that, you are comfortable with that. If you click clear attempt, that whole student submission just goes away and is just evaporates out of the system entirely. And then assuming that the test or the assignment is still at least in the availability window, the student can go back in and uh, uh, access that test again and retry it a second time. Again, irrespective of what you had set for multiple attempts, this is a separate issue, but it does have to be still available and you could clear it and give them a second try um, if you're in that kind of situation. Um, I think that's why our former Blackboard administrator recommends maybe you know, live proctoring the tests you know, during the availability window in case you get one of those email type things. I have not done that to date. That's kind of a new thing for me. But at any rate, clear attempt just wipes out the submission and it effectively never existed in the first place. All right, so the multiple choice questions were, oh, I was looking for the power. I, I didn't look for the power. That's my problem um, uh, in that second question. So the multiple choice questions are automatically graded, obviously. And you, the instructor, are seeing what the student said, right? The student is given answer and that's being compared to correct answer. Um, and so obviously question one, the student got correct. Question two, they did not. So that's a pretty good um, uh, contrast there. If you are, like for some reason you have second thoughts or uh, you, you, you just, maybe one of the, the questions was a mistake, you do have the option of going over here and manually editing that score. So if I wanted to change that, that one point to zero, I could just type that in and change it. So you have total power over that. 
Um, or, you know, maybe if you have, for some reason, a 10 point multiple choice question and you decide you want to give, you know, partial credit for something in a particular way, you could do that. If you want. You'd have to do it for each student, though. But the thing I'm really trying to get to here is here is this um, open response question, which is in the, ca the uh, essay category. And what you can see here is the, uh, the given answer that the student uh, submitted. Um, if we'd filled in the correct answer when we made the question, uh, that would be showing up here. And again, the primary use of that is if you have one instructor and you have a separate teaching assistant and the teaching assistant is logging in and they can see the, the correct answer that was expected, use that to do the grading uh, would be a great way to do that. If you're the instructor, probably you already know what the answer is supposed to be. It is waiting, right? Uh, we set this to be a five point question and kind of near the top right here, there's just a dash. It's waiting for us, the instructor, to type in any number we want. Um, obviously partial credit needs to be on the table here. So we're in a second, we're gonna fill in zero, one, two, three, four, or five. Uh, I'm reading this, great. You can see that in addition to that score there, you know, I guess I'll just fill it in right now. So pretty short, that's a solid response. So I'll fill in five points there. In addition to that, you can give response to the individual student on this individual question. You got a full standard text box. You could make formulas. You could make something bold face if you want to emphasize it. Just for argument's sake, uh, I'll just pose the question, which version of the closure law did you mean? Now, obviously that's a comically um, hyper precise comment to put there and I would never actually do that. But anyway, the point is that's a comment the student can see later on when they log in to check their grades, they can see this and hopefully that's helpful. Further down, see I'm actually done grading the, um, the test itself. Further down, there's a box for feedback on the whole test, right? This box up here was feedback just on that individual question if you wanna do that. Down here, there's feedback on the whole test. Personally, I tend to use either one or the other, I guess. I mean, this is analogous to the assignments interface that I have used for several years for programming um, assignments. Uh, I, this is gonna be the first time that I've ever used the, the testing facility in this way if I do this. So, I mean, I guess you could use both. Up until now, I've only used one or the other, but I guess you could use both. So, feedback on the individual question, feedback on the whole test that's visible um, externally to the student. And then here also is uh, internal uh, documentation about why it was graded. And so again, this would probably be from a teaching assistant to the actual lead instructor. Not That box is not visible to the student if I'm reading that correctly. So external feedback, internal documentation if you needed that. Uh, haven't used these to date. I'm sure I wouldn't be using that last box at all but um, uh, there's uh, some options for that. Great. So I'll hit submit to this, uh, this grading. And if there was more than one student, if there was more than one gradable item, it would send me to the next student, the next student submission. But in this case, since there's only the one student, it just bumps me back to the grade center. And you can see that the total result, the one point from the multiple choice question and the five points from the essay question are added up. Again, it's already automatically fed into the weighted uh, formula. That's updated instantaneously. And I guess the last thing, so more or less we're done interacting with that as the instructor. The very last thing is of course now, you know, it doesn't, this view doesn't show us the maximum number of points on either one of these assessments. So sometimes me looking at that, that, I'm like, was that six out of 10 or was that six out of six? Now I don't know and I don't know whether that was good or not. So let me go in here and I'm gonna modify the view uh, a little bit and just show you the options for that and, and show you what I would probably normally do. So I'll click the, uh, the down arrow here. I'll click, uh, uh, there ought to be edit grade, yeah, edit column information, slightly different order for a testing type things. But anyway, edit call information is what I want. And the reason that six is showing up is because the primary display is set to score. Um, I could pick a different thing here. I could pick percentage if I only wanted to see the percentage. But you know what might be really nice is to see both. So I will make use of the secondary display and I'll leave the primary display the numerical score, the raw score. I'll set secondary display to percentage. And I'm pretty sure 
that the primary display is visible to the student, but the secondary display is only visible to you, the instructor. So kind of consider that. I'll hit submit there. And so now I can see, and it does give you a whole lot of decimal places, which I don't think is necessary, but anyway, um, you can see here that it's now reporting that, um, that mini exit exam as raw score six, percentage 85.7%. And now just, it's a little bit more visually obvious that that student's doing pretty good, obviously a B score for that particular exam. I could do that for all these different things here. I could do that for test statistics or really any column, but I think that's probably good for now. So hopefully that gives you a pretty good overview of what it looks like to a student when they are interfacing with one of your tests, whether multiple choice or whether you're choosing to put an open response question in there. And also the fact that multiple choice tests just bang, automatically done, no scantrons, no paper, no nothing. Uh, but if you do happen to use an open response question, there's a pretty nice facility there to go through one after the other, make a decision, give feedback, and obviously fill in any score that you want as the instructor, and then also get a good view here in the Grade Center after the fact uh, once you've done that. So I hope that's helpful. And again, if you do have uh, comments or questions or anything that uh, you know to do better here than I just did, uh, feel free to email me at dcollins at Kingsborough. And uh, good luck this semester, and I'll talk to you later.